legendary boxing commentator Jim Lampley is in town in Las Vegas ahead of Tim Zhu's fight with Sebastian Fandora. You've seen late changes before, but this one's a little bit different, Jim. Oh, this is a very unusual late change. Up to a point, it's not shocking to me because I really never had a strong feeling that Thurman was committedly real uh, in this enterprise and in the fight. You know, he's second fight in about five years, uh, getting ready to go in against, you know, very dangerous, very active boxer puncher uh, who has physical advantages against him. Um, so when I heard that uh, Thurman had incurred the obligatory arm injury, uh, you know, then the next step is, okay, who's the substitute? And it's, Sorry, are you saying the injury is not real or you're well, just not no, surprised? Well, no, I have no idea, okay? I don't have any sources in Thurman's camp. I did do an interview with Thurman a few days before. He was, you know, very upbeat and positive. So, no, I'll, t I'll take it at face value that he had uh, an injury in camp. If you're inactive for a long period of time, you're way more susceptible to injuries in training than if you stayed in the game and you know had fights at regular intervals and therefore are not in that position. So I'll take it at face value that there was an injury, but it's also not shocking under these circumstances that it was an injury. You've called so many of the major fights throughout boxing history, particularly in recent decades, but um, have you ever seen someone coming in at late notice who's done something as shocking as what Sebastian Fandora could do? Well, Fundora is a totally different um, enterprise uh, than Keith Thurman's a conventional boxer, puncher, normal sized 154 pounder, nothing particularly unusual about him. Great chance for Zoo to beat a recognizable opponent in America and begin to develop uh, his American identity. Now he gets out of the Cracker Jack box, this guy who's six feet five and a half inches tall, <laughs> fights in an aggressive inside body punching style. I don't I don't know that I've ever seen exactly that package. Uh, and to to wind up facing an opponent like that with two weeks notice, something like that, this is a tremendous challenge in my book for Zoo. Why doesn't he fight on, on the outside, Sebastian Fandora? Surely he needs to use his advantages, but he simply doesn't seem to want to. Would you advise him to? I have no idea. I don't really know him other than one interview. His father brought him into boxing. His father is his trainer. Uh, surely they have something in mind as to why he should fight the way he does. At the end of the day, style is the product of instinct. And regardless of his height and his range, if he wants to fight inside and go to your rib cage, that's the best thing to do. So that's what he's doing. You saw the journey of Kostya Zoo. Now we see Tim as the A-side headlining a major show in Las Vegas. How big could Tim Zoo be here in the United States? Well, I know from having covered his father that there's personality there. Uh, and uh, I was unfortunately the blow-by-blow -blow voice of the worst thing that happened in Kostya Zoo's career. Uh, he was a heavy favorite to beat the journeyman Vince Phillips on the island of San Martin. Um, I'm sure he knew, but you never can uh, cover for everything that Vince Phillips's one asset at that point in his career was that he still had power in the right hand, and he landed a perfect right hand shot, uh, and that, that was the end of that. So I never covered another Kostyzu fight. Uh, I don't even recall whether he had another meaningful fight here in the United States. It was one of the most shocking results that uh, I ever covered. and. Uh, I, I hope that karma is gone and I'm not going to bring Tim Zhu any bad luck because I think that he's an attractive personality who could be a star. That was a, an incredible night for Kostya. He looks back on it saying that it was the making of him as a person and as a boxer. Do you think Tim Zhu faces that sort of a risk against Sebastian Fandora this weekend? Not the one punch right hand risk, something different. You know, the risk that he can't solve the puzzle of Fundora on the inside with that tall body and those long arms, that's possible. Uh, I hope that he was able to get some sparring partners at the last minute who in some way mimicked what Fundora does so that he's not going into the ring and facing this, this particular equation for the very first time. What do you think happens in this fight? 
Logic is that Zoo solves the puzzle of the less experienced Fundora and at some point takes advantage of his aggression on the inside with authoritative counter counterpunching uh, and Tim Zoo gets a uh, meaningful victory that helps to advance his public image in the United States. That's the logical outcome. The illogical outcome is possible because the opponent is illogical. Also on this card, Australia has a lot of interest in Michael Zarafa, who's fighting for a world title against Erislandi Lara. It's a WBA middleweight world title, third last fight on the card. Have you had a look at that fight? Haven't paid much attention, but Erislandi Lara has been around a long time. Uh, he's, a, he's a stylist. Uh, if the opponent has power, I think there's an opportunity there. Jim, um, you've got a busy day with pay-per-view.com, I'm sure, on, on Fight Night, but were you disappointed that you didn't get the call up when Prime Video uh, announced that they had a new lineup and potentially you could have been a part of that? I called fights for 30 years, 31 years, on the greatest and most prestigious television network ever to have been involved in boxing. I had more privileges as a blow-by-blow -blow commentator than are logical for uh, any person uh, including me, uh, I've been lucky beyond lucky. So there's no room for disappointment. At my age and with everything I have uh, in my history, I did not expect to be chosen for that. Uh, I know the personalities involved and the friendship structures involved, and I congratulate Al Heyman for being loyal to his friend Mauro Ranallo. Fantastic. Uh, well, we hope to hear you again soon because you're the best, in my opinion, ever to do it. Uh, and it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. That is the legendary Jim Lampley. He's here for Tim Zoo against Sebastian Fundora that you'll see on main event this Sunday.